And somebody asked me, you know, when you say that you really wanted to get out of the village, does that mean you hate the village? Mm. And I'm telling them, no, the village made me who I am. Mm. And it gave me the foundation yeah. uh, upon which I have built everything else now. So I love the village. Even today I go back. Mm. I, I still have a house there. When I really want total quiet and serenity and calm, I go to the village. I promised you value in this CTA. We have just started, but it's already of excess value. If you're catching us here, do your life a favor. Go back and start from episode one. Don't, don't, don't just let the title of this uh, episode make you start from here. Okay, Mary, let's continue with this story. We are entering high school. Can go free. Can go free. Can go free. Can go free. <laughs> but before we get there, I want to understand. Uh, growing up. And also, I even want to understand more about primary school, because uh, how was it for you? How was primary? So, paint me a picture of the community that you're growing up, neighbors, your siblings, the relationship you have, and then after that, also paint me a picture of school. It's primary school. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, it's quite a lot. But let me start by saying that life in the village was super. It was great. And, 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 and I don't want to qualify it because I would say we didn't have much in terms of money. Mm. But in terms of food, because I remember we had a farm and, and most of the villagers had farms anyway. Mm. So there was a lot of agricultural activities. Mm. Subsistence so like, living. So you would eat what you're Subsistence, yeah. Subsistence, so like yes. wood grow, um, uh, potatoes, maize, beans. Uh, vegetables, all were from the farm, organic. So it would have been very good today when mm. we are talking about organic mm. uh, uh, products. So we did a lot of farming. Now, during the holidays, there was no choice but to go to the farm. And even during the school term, like um, we also had cows, mm. dairy cows. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, Kenya cooperative creameries mm. used to come and collect the milk at 4 a.m. 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. Okay. What that meant is that you had to wake up at 2 a.m. to milk the cows and make your way to the collection center. So, so and sometimes I also say that probably also um, has really affected the way I run my day, even today. I'm a very early riser. Because mm. I started from when I was very young. You have to go milk the cows and then make your way to, to the center to deliver the milk and it will be collected. We also had coffee. Uh, coffee was a cash crop, as mm. you are aware. Mm -hmm. And the factory was not very far from my home. So you, 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 you have to do what you need to do, whether it's taking care of it, uh, picking it, spraying it, mm. and of course, harvesting and taking to the center again. And we all used to do that, boys, girls. Now, also that time, we all used to cook, whether it's boys, whether it's girls. Mm. Uh, the chores were for everybody. So mom would tell my brother, Matthew, uh, it's your turn to go and cook lunch. Mm. He's been in the farm, but then he said, go ahead, cook lunch for us, for everybody else. So the chores were divided like that, uh, feeding the cows and all that. Mm. That was for every child in the village used to do that. So probably that shaped our work ethics mm. in a way. Yes. Now, it was, um, so the food was in plenty. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had our cousins. That time, uh, the families were operating in a very social environment. So your neighbors were your The neighbors relatives. were like my relatives. Yeah, my uncles were there and my second cousins, the mm. first cousins. Everybody was a relative close to me. But then there were other families who were not necessarily. And you remember also we had the, um, the clan, which mm. is the extended family. 
like my grandma my grandfathers um, half brothers mm. they are also there within the vicinity mm. so it was a very large family and everybody used to look out for each other and we used to receive a lot of advice from those old men and women because they they would visit our home one of the past times was my mom would cook tea and then with a the kettle there the people would come they talk as they sip sometimes she would tell us stories uh, some of them were just folklore about the greedy hyena <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, or the giant you know those giant stories yep, yep, yep. Uh, a lot of them were very good life lessons mm -hmm. so that folk was the tales. life the folk tales yes. yeah and they they they, they there are some lessons you don't forget mm. because they kept on being repeated every single day so it was almost like a different way of training people and mm. giving them lessons. So life was good. You know, you've just said something yeah. so powerful. I tell mm. people part of the reason why I do this show. Yes. Because as Africans, we are storytellers. Yes. That's how information, Naturally, yeah. morals, uh, values, all of these things were passed down. Yes. So I am, I'm, it's so good to hear somebody you say. You identify with that, yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. So mom would tell us stories like uh, she used to tell a story about the greedy hyena. Mm. And uh, you know, there that's the hyena who 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 smelled some nice meat somewhere, and then he decides to go and look for it where it is, and then he gets to a crossroad. Uh, the road is going in two different directions, so he's wondering, oh, should I go this way or should I go this way? And then if I go this way, maybe it's on this other. <laughs> oh, so which one? <laughs> then he decides now to take both. <laughs> And he goes, he goes, and of course the road is widening <laughs> and eventually he dies because of his greed. So she was like, don't be greedy, just take one route. Mm -hmm. It might land you there. If it's not the correct one, you will come back and then yes. you take the other one. <laughs> so those were the kind of stories, very graphic, yeah. uh, that she used to tell us. Now, um, there was also a lot of fun. And a lot, a lot of community mm. work. Like uh, we had uh, the usual, when people used to till the land, they would uh, come together. Like our land needs to be tilled. So all my friends and my brother's friends in the village, they would come. We all do it together. Mm. We finish, then we go to the next one. Mm. So, you know, it's like Harambe, you know. Communal. Yes. Communal. Yes. So we do one land, we finish, go to the neighbors, finish, go to my cousins, finish, and the parents are there cooking for us. Wow. That's how the work used to be done. So mm -hmm. it is done very quickly. So in one day you could actually do like three farms or something. Mm -hmm. Then you finish and go to something else. So there was a lot of that community work for the better. And then uh, the other aspect was the entertainment. Mm -hmm. Now, it so happened that in my village, we had uh, a mobile movie theater. A, a mobile movie theater? Yes, uh -huh. in a place called Kamakwa. Uh, Kamakwa was the, like the, sh the bigger shopping center. Uh -huh. um, right now, it's, it's a quite a fairly big town, in the, a suburb in Nyeri town. Mm. Uh, so a lot of the, um, of the salaried workers who work in town reside there okay. so it's a highly growing mm. area so there are these guys who used to bring the mobile uh, theater so they would just come with those um, um those old movies of bond mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for entertainment yep. for the villagers but you see my mom was very strict so oh, she was saved she was, she was, she was a street gathering, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so me. for me, going there was a no-no, even <laughs> for my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> even for my brothers. Yes. So we were not allowed to go. But those who were going, my cousins used to go. Their parents were a bit more lenient. Mm. So they would tell us stories about, you know, what they are showing. Oh, this movie, Bond, I don't know, he killed who, I don't know what, you know. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. But there were also some mischief because uh, some of the people would go there because it used to be in the evening, like mm. around seven, and the place now, you know, they have to put on the lights mm. because they need it to be dark yeah. for the screen. So there are people who used to just go with the rotten eggs. And when the movie is uh, going on, 
bitch. They ah, just throw. And on. you know how that thing smells. <laughs> So some of my cousins were really just like, oh, I was giving a hit on the head <laughs> with that, with that rot, and then you are smelling all over. So, so the mischief guys were still there, yeah. uh, even that time. Yeah. And and when you look back, it was probably fun, uh, but but there was also one item that was uh, historic. Every Easter, uh-huh. we used to have safari rally. Hey. I'm not sure where Safari Daddy went. But it's back. Oh, it's back, but it's but not they the same. Have that boom, boom, boom. I don't think it's the same. Yeah. So everybody used to look forward to Easter. And Easter was always very wet <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. There was a lot of rain. And you know the roads were not very good mm. like they are now. Mm. They were not tarmac. Right now the roads in the villages are tarmac mm-hmm. and they are very good mm-hmm. all weather. So that time it was muddy, muddy, muddy. So the Joginda scenes, the Sheka Meta, ah, yeah, yeah. those were household <laughs> names. <laughs> it was called Sheka Meta. Yes. <laughs> so they were household names. Yeah. And uh, people used to look forward but to that. It, a bit it later was on. a community thing. Yeah. So we would all go to the road. We know the schedule. Somehow there were no mobile phones, but information used to flow. When a PT are he here on mm. this day. So we'd all be lined up there, you know, just to wave them and, you know, see the cars, you know, struggling Mm. on the muddy roads and all that. So that was an event for everybody. And then um, one other aspect, which was very good then, and not probably now was security. That time we were able to do even vigils in churches and all that because it was very secure mm. and incidents of insecurity were very low mm. and uh, burglaries and murders mm. and things like that they were totally unheard of so like easter eve we would do a vigil mm. even girls boys young mm. kids parents would feel comfortable so as a family you would go and do the vigil maybe up to midnight one two three mm. a.m and you go back home no incidents. These days, things have changed. So they've even changed the calendar for the churches. I love your perspective yeah. on, you know, sometimes everybody's saying, get out of the village. from. Mm. But you, you're saying, I love that experience. That, it, it was great. That I had growing up. And it sounds rich. I love yeah. the Ubuntu aspect of it. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. So it was good. And everyone was there for each other. And everyone used to support each other. I will also talk about it in the perspective of, how I got supported by the village to get to where I am. Because, um, you know, with six six kids, my mom struggled a bit to pay our fees. Mm. And uh, what happened is that, you know, sometimes she would just, uh, she she joined an investment group. They actually formed an investment group with some of her age mates Mm. and friends in the village. And um, they started... Yeah, you know, just contributing, you know, like a circle type of yes, yes. investment type of uh, thing. Just the little means you have, they would contribute. And when it, it, it is time for kids to go back to school, you're allowed to borrow some money, mm. you know, to pay the fees and all that. And you'd also get some deficit from some of the members, those who are not too badly off. So that is how our fees was paid. This is This is high school. Yeah, high school, yeah, because, because now there was money to be paid in high school. Yes. Primary school, it was okay, Primary, yes. because it was free, other than the building fund. Yes. So secondary school got a bit tricky. Mm. And at one point, we were three of us oh, okay. in secondary school. So it was tough. Now, um, that was one aspect. Now, the other aspect was, of course, um, the relationship with the larger family. And this was very solid because like over the holidays, I would go to visit my auntie. My auntie was married, now my mom's sister, Mm. was married uh, still in Nyeri, but quite a distance off. It's a place now where you had to take a vehicle to get there. Okay. In a place called um, Idegori. Right now it is Tetu constituency, uh, administratively. So I would go there for the holidays. And when you go there, you know, your cousins, they are like your brothers and your sisters. And I would take sometimes the whole holiday 
that auntie used to love me and i used to love her because i'm named after her mm. mary wangari yes so we used to go there and over christmas uh, my cousin used to rear pigs so she, he used to slaughter a pig every christmas to celebrate nice so tunakula we are, we so eat <laughs> pork <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know whether you know the downside of eating, uh, the, the, you know, that fatty, uh, the fatty part you, of the... You, you visit the... Uh-huh. the <laughs> <laughs> so in the evening, you have a long queue <laughs> <laughs> to the washroom. <laughs> but it, I guess it was part of the fun. Yes. So, so that was... So life in the village mm. was very good. Okay. And somebody asked me, you know, when you say that you really wanted to get out of the village, does that mean you hate the village? Mm. And I'm telling them, no, the village made me who I am. Mm. And it gave me the foundation yeah. uh, upon which I have built everything else now. So I love the village. Even today I go back. Mm. I, I still have a house there. When I really want total quiet and serenity and calm, I go to the village. Yeah. Is this and I've you delivered go back to the same place where you grew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same house. Wow. Of course, you know you when upgraded it. we upgraded <laughs> it uh, when my mom was alive, yes. when we started working. Yes. So it's not the same yeah, right course, house yes. house, but it is there. So since she died, uh, we use it. I use it when when I'm in the village. Nice. So it's a it's a great place. And that's where also some of the values have remained. Yeah. That is where when I am there and people know I'm there, they still come mm. without an appointment. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah, the yeah, bank. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's here. I'll come. Ah, I'll yeah. <laughs> They'll come in and say hello. Mm. So I love the village because of those values mm. that I took out of it. Yeah. Now, the only thing I said about walking out of the village was the poverty. The poverty aspect. And the lack, you know, the want. Mm. That's what I walked away from. And, and I'm happy that I did. Mm. Hey, Mary, your story is powerful. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm enjoying every bit of it. Let's transition into, you do extremely well in CPE, primary school. Mm-hmm. So well that you are the top student that the school has ever had. Yes. Uh, you go to... Uh, come go free school, <laughs> high school. Yes. Uh, is it a boy's school? <laughs> Just because now I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> now, now let me put you to rest. Now, Kagofiri is a girl's school. Oh, phew. It was, it was uh, presented as a girl's school. Okay. 